Hello, and welcome back to the Victoria's Book Podcast. I'm Victoria. I'm a knitwear designer living in the Pacific Northwest of Washington State. And uh, it's September 5th. It's Labor Day. And I thought I would sit down and record this afternoon. I, uh, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> I got like excited about recording and then went around to gather all the things. Like I have a little semicircle around me of all of my stuff and I wanted to show you and I have notes of what I want to talk about. And then I sat down and I was like, Ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm going to try to take it a little slow. So I don't talk too much, ramble, say things I don't want me to say. Drink water. Um, and I have quite a few projects to talk about. I feel like there was a period of time earlier this year when I was recording a lot and I didn't make a lot of progress from recording to recording. Like I, I would feel like I had the same whips over and over again to show and it was really boring <laughs> and that's kind of faded away and I've moved into just a new phase to kind of got my knitting my knitting jive back and I've been knitting lots of stuff and finishing things at least once a month and um, maybe two a month so it's more fun to record when I have um, more to show you and sometimes they think oh I should record today I'm like oh no if I wait a couple of days I'll have that project in a, in a little bit further done and it'll be more more interesting so I did wait this week to record so I could show you a little bit more the first thing well the first thing first thing is I'm wearing a shawl that I knit and designed called meet cute cowl it has three layers and teal pink and beige and uh, it's got seed stitch and then brioche stitch because both seed and brioche are a stitch that uses like a one by one kind of rib seed stitch you are purling into knits knitting into pearls so it it doesn't look like rib at all and then the brioche is knit one pearl one so they feed really easily into themselves. And I was so excited when I made that discovery. And I knit a big triangle blanket shawl called Meet Cute, because it's the Meet Cute between Seed Stitch and Brioche. And uh, that came out a few years ago. And I was thinking about making it again and using like scrap yarn and holding yarn double and just like not buying bulky because it's a bulky weight. I think it's bulky weight. Um, bulky weight yarn for it, but using like stash yarns. I thought that would be really fun. Yeah, I need to think about it a little bit more and of course wait for the weather to be a little cooler. But I thought about that. Um, and afterwards I thought, well, this stitch combination would be really fun in a cowl. So it's just a long tube, gives you a nice layered lace drape and you can um, just make really fun combinations with colors, which is perfect for brioche. So I could definitely see myself making this one again. Um, it's all about color combinations for me. So I have to think of or get inspired by a trio of colors. And then I'll definitely want to make another one. Um, I showed a couple of yarns from Farmer's Daughter Fiber maybe two episodes ago. It was like a green, a pink, a gray, and a brown. And I realized recently that that's really similar to the colors I used for this. You know, this is sort of a, a beigey, but it looks gray on camera. And then the, the pink Dumplin', which is the same pink and these other yarns that I got. And then the York is not that dissimilar from Holy Matrimony, which are, this is Dumplin'. And then uh, this is Holy Matrimony. And then this is Mini Moons, and so those are the three. And then there's a brown also. And I was like, oh yeah, I definitely have like these colors together for a while. Okay. Easy V. It's a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. Boiler Networks. 
This is post blocking. So I did it on Instagram reel and I'll have put it into the beginning of this episode of um, me walking outside wearing it. And um, it looks pretty good pre-block fit really well and it just the blocking on this color work just is so beautiful so I would put it on for you but it's still pretty warm and I wanted to wear this because um somebody purchased it recently and I thought oh yeah it's right it's like now we're moving into fall it's time to start thinking about fall projects and my fall designs to talk about again so this is a great one to start with. It's not um, super big. So if it's still warm where you are and you don't want to knit with a lot of material, this is a good choice and it'll be really great for um, the fall and the winter. But anyways, um, that's why I'm not wearing the Easy V because it's still about 70, high 70s out there. But yeah, I really love it. It's a little shorter than I was expecting it to be when I versus knitting it. I, I guess when I came to find myself ready to do the ribbing was earlier than I expected because I wasn't sure whether to make it right at hip level, little cropped, but not like waist cropped, or should I go longer? And so I ended up, when I was the night that I finished it, I ended up looking at different pictures on Ravelry, which is something I do when I knit a popular pattern, a pattern that there's lots of people that have made it. Uh, it's really helpful to go look at different people's bodies and see what they did. You know, how long did they make it? How wide was it on them? What did it look like? And see just basically, yeah, what it looks like on different people. And I found that I think I liked it more on people a little shorter than longer. I feel like the proportions of the yoke, color way on the yoke, if the body was longer, it's just like the color work is so high up on the sweater and it was really long. I just feel I didn't like, didn't like that ratio as much. So this feels really balanced to me. And um, I made modifications, as I've talked about previously, of doing short rows in the back, which you can't tell now so much that's blocked. It flattened out pretty well. It was looking really curved. When you do short rows, you add extra fabric to one section, which is the back, and then it sort of tucks it under a little bit. And then when you block it out, a lot of times that all evens out, which it pretty much did. It still kind of got, I don't know if you'll be able to see, get this front sleeve out of the way. Yeah, it tucks and goes under a little bit, and that's because of the short row. And you can see the back is a little longer. So there is extra space in the back when I wear it, but it's very comfortable in that sense. And it also, all that extra fabric is behind me. It doesn't sort of move its way to the front and sort of make the front look oversized. So it fits me perfectly in the front, and then there's just extra space back there. So it gives me, it just feels very roomy. So. It kind of looks like it lives a little bit extra, but um, I have I have worried about that. Like, oh, does it look like there's just too much there? Or, but actually, in wearing it over time, that that just doesn't even matter. I don't even notice it after a bit. A bit so, yep. And I feel like the color work blocked really beautifully, especially on the sleeves. As I've noted, it's really easy for me to get good to get good tension in color work on a, sh on a small circumference as opposed to something bigger. And the only spots where it's a little bit, you know, wavy, not so flat and smooth on the color work is probably right at the top um, with the indigo dyed skein because it's a little bit thicker than the other colors. It's a different kind of yarn. It's the same kind of yarn, a different, um, different weight. It's a little bit, even uneven isn't the right word, but just a little bit puckered. And I feel like the rest of it, including the lower parts of the indigo, all blocked really beautifully. So I'm actually impressed that it did smooth out as much as it has. So yeah, it's, I feel like I like it a lot. I feel like 
I haven't gotten to know it very well yet. I've worn it at market a couple times. On Saturday, it was actually cold and windy, so I got to wear it for a couple hours and then I wore it for like 30 minutes the next day before it heated up. So um, I look forward to the weather allowing me to wear it for a long period of time, kind of get used to it and pair it with different things. I'm, you know, incorporating my wardrobe, there's just like no way to do that when it's hot. I just don't even want to think about it yet or like try on stuff or like I don't know, I just can't wear anything but <laughs> right now. And I didn't feel that way, I think, when it was hot initially. And now it's just been hot for enough enough weeks. It's just like, why bother, you know? But yes, I'm very happy. I finished it August 30th. And I finished a sweater at the end of June, right before July, too. So I feel like it's nice to finish the sweater up at the end of the month. That felt really good. So I highly recommend that one. I definitely want to knit it again. I know I showed the uh, Bougie Beaver colorway from Magpie Fibers on here a couple episodes ago that I have swatched for it. I just didn't cast on. Um, I think I think I'll be happy with the solid color too. So, anyway. so last episode I showed this begin the beginnings of an Amigas tank top. And uh, I obviously knit a little bit more on there, which I did all in one sitting, which is super great because it knits up really quickly. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, but this is the the one I made last two, year two years ago. Dink. So it fits like so. So you cast on one edge and you knit sideways do the diagonal and then you cast off and you knit that twice and you seam it together and it's just very customizable this is the side seam and uh, this is the yarn that was listed in the pattern that they don't make anymore um that had, does have cotton in it and maybe some silk too, because it has a nice luster to it. Anyways, I can't get this anymore and I wanted to make a neutral color. So I picked the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor um, in hammock. And what I'm gonna try to do this month, since it's still so warm, I always cast something on in August, the end of summer. I'm gonna try to finish the first piece by the end of next week. So I have about just under two weeks to do that. And I think with the speed of this gauge, I think I'll be able to do it. It just looks so good. I have quite a few things I've cast on, so it'll just be, you know, a little bit of discipline to work on this as opposed to other things. Something that's really exciting that I actually didn't film last time. What happened? I think I filmed here. And then I went house sitting and filmed the intro to that episode at that house set. And it was a couple of days after I filmed. So I had a little bit of like, I had like this much and that ended up in the reel I made and in the beginning of the episode, but it wasn't something I had started when I actually recorded. So maybe nobody noticed, but anyways, I noticed when I was editing, like, oh shoot, I haven't, I didn't actually film that, but this is it. So in the time that I filmed last time and got the episode out, I have made almost two whole socks. Uh, and this is a pattern I'm writing hopefully this week or next week. Um, and I will have inserted a picture or two of me wearing the sock because it looks really, really good on. I would say actually, it looks cute like this, but it looks really good on my foot. So I'm super excited. Um, two by two rib, just my favorite kind of ribbing. And then rows of main color and contrasting color. And then when you get to the heel, you do the whole heel in the contrast color. Heel flap and gusset. And then you continue your striping all the way to the toe. 
and I did the round toe that I really like. So these are all the features of sock knitting that I that are my favorite and I wanted to put them in a pattern together. I have one other basic sock pattern, Cherishti Swanky Socks, which is a little collaboration between Cherishti Whaley of Wax and Wool I did in my very first year of designing back in 2018. And that pattern is available on Ravelry and victoriaswool.com. And that pattern has uh, an afterthought heel and a, what's it called? Not a square toe, but kind of toe that leaves, it's more angled. I don't know, there's a name for it, I can't remember. But this is a rounded toe. And I just think that it's a little, just a little sweeter looking, a little cuter. Um, and I love the heel flop and gusset. So, top down also. And I love stripes and I love this color combination a lot. And it made me so happy to knit this. I used Stroll Tweed from Knit Picks in their Heather, Persimian Heather is the orange one. And then I believe this is Prussian Heather. So like a, not quite a navy blue, but pretty close. They just go so well together. They're very autumnal. And um, it just gave me all the fall vibes. Got me really excited. So glad it looks really good on. I'm about to do the heel flap for this one. Um, so if you're interested in testing it for me, please uh, comment below with your email. Well, comment below. Email me at victoriaswool at gmail.com so that your information is kept private. But and I'll probably try to do five sizes, I think. Um, standard woman sizes at this point. That probably sounds good. I am knitting the, one of the bigger sizes. I have decent size feet, I'm a size 10. So I started a cast on with 72 stitches. A lot of people do, like I think probably I can average two size. People cast on 64 stitches and I'll do a size 64 as well, but um, that will probably be the next size smaller. And if you watched me make these in black and white in previous episodes, I was doing a size zero <laughs> needle and I used like 76 stitches. I think um, that sock ended up just being a little too small. So this is a similar yarn. So that was regular stole. This is stole tweed uh, on a size one. Yeah, but I'm really looking forward to getting these out to you sometime in the next couple months. And I'm definitely going to be knitting more. You'll see another pair shortly. I ordered more, more Stroll Tweed because they have really, really nice colors. Do yourself a favor and go on to Knit Picks and look at all their Tweed, Heather Tweed colors. Because not only is it tweeded, but it's also heathered. So there's some nuances in the colorways, especially the orange one. I would say there's a lot more color. Um, that's a little bit tonal, not tonal, heathered. Is that the same thing? Anyways, it's just really fun. And I just always wanted to get to the next stripe. Uh, so I just almost knit whole, two whole socks since I recorded last. The next thing that I have to show you is a cast on I did on September 1st with Tanya. My, one of my knitting besties up in Canada. We did a back to school cast on and um, we had been planning it for three months. I think we talked about last week, like when was it that we discussed it and like chose September as the date to start. And I think it was sometime in June. And so this is what I've got to show for it since Thursday. And, um, I kind of want to measure it right now. Oh, my measuring tape is not here. Anyways, I'm at least at eight inches now, which is really exciting. Bottom up. I haven't done a bottom up in a long time, but my first sweater that I knit many years ago was a bottom up in the round. So I'll knit to like here and I'll stop and I'll make the sleeves and then I'll knit them all together on one big needle and start decreasing. And the yoke has beautiful color work. This is going to be blue. I know I've shown this yarn on 
here before. And uh, I would show you the Colorwork swatch, but since I didn't have to start with the Colorwork, I haven't, um, I started this swatch, <laughs> but I haven't finished it. So I'm using a uh, size US 9 to knit the body and it's two strands of Pluto Lopi held together. And it's making a very like, not drapey in the sense of like linen, but it's nice and light and open. And um, I followed the pattern and did, uh, the pattern is first light, by the way, I'll link it below. But they did a, um, a Latvian long tail cast on. Looks really good, it was very easy. I would definitely recommend doing it if you do this pattern. I like it a lot. It's my favorite color of oatmeal, by the way. The perfect shade. And I have one more whip to show. Which is Waiting for Henry by Tabitha Gandhi, I believe. I just looked at her name. And uh, I pulled these yarns from my stash a few weeks back, cast it on another cow with friends. I'm using Black Walnut from Lichen and Lace sock yarn. Then the, the whiteish one is their linen colorway, also from Lincoln and Lace. And then this little sort of pinky orangey thing is uh, a Patreon colorway from a homespun house. So it's a little mini that I got. And I did something interesting with this. I uh, have been told that color work on socks can like make your socks not fit, right? Because it's super, can, it can tighten up. And um, I thought, oh, well, I'll go up a size for the color work. And um, it just looks, the stitches look sloppy. So and that's this little section right here that I did the two. So I went back to the size one. And then the next little arrow section I did with the one. And on camera, you probably can't tell, which is great. I kept looking at it and going, I bet you won't be able to tell from far away. And I'd like hold it out and be like, it's fine. You know, like little things bother you where you're knitting and stuff. So I went ahead and it's a little less stretchy, the second one, but I think it's going to fit fine. It looks okay. Um, what's going to happen now in the pattern is I'm doing three by one rib now, which I absolutely love. I think it looks so good on socks. Freaking love it. Um, anyways. I just did that this morning because I knew I was going to record. So I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just knit up the rest of this color work. And, um, yeah, that's really fun. There is yarn. I wanted to show you that I got a couple weeks ago. Um, Pearl Soho had a sale and sometime in August and, uh, I got some Goodwill. So Goodwill is their 100% Andean Highland wool that I believe is a DK light worsted, I think. I can't remember. I feel like it was a worsted weight when I got some gray skeins. Maybe it changed or maybe I just didn't remember correctly, but I think this is listed as a DK on their website. So I got sweater quantities of four colors. This is Hayfield. So I need more yellow sweaters in my life for sure. It smells really good. It's very light. This would make just this very light and delicate. Um, I have a knit with it though, so I don't really know, but it has a very lightness to it. I got a green called dark spruce I'm kind of feeling like there's going to be a green phase soon because I just bought another sweater quantity of green that's coming you know I was in a blue phase now I might go through a green phase 
Then I got, of course, an oatmeal because I love oatmeal so much. This is winter grass. And then the last one, I love autumnal oranges. This is apple cider. Looks a little bit more neon on camera. It's pretty bright, but it's a heather, so it's definitely got little bits of yellow in it too. <laughs> Very fall. Um, I don't have any distinct plans for them. I just wanted to take advantage of the sale. And this is an inexpensive yarn anyway. I think it's only $12 for, could be 14, I can't quite remember, but for 383 yards. So I just needed four per skein, four per color to get a sweater's quantity for kind of the general sizes of sweaters I make, which is something like 1,200 to 1,400 yards. Which is a good thing to know about yourself, actually. If you ever wanna buy yarn willy-nilly and you wanna buy a sweater's quantity, good to know like generally like how much your size range um, yarn uses in various weights. Um, and the last thing I wanted to show you is I, something I've talked about before. I just realized that I have four of them and they're different colors and it would be fun to talk about them and I think that everybody should have them whether they buy this brand or they just go to the craft store and get some of this tubing. Um, it's called the Knitting Barber. And it comes in this little tin and has a little name of the color on the back. It's reflecting, sorry. But it's the tubing that's hollow that you can pop on your needle tip and use to pull through your live stitches so you can try on. Uh, your sweater or you can put stitches on hold. I put the sleeves of my Easy V on hold. I didn't bind them off until I was done with the body. I also did that for the Great Loaf, the black cardigan that I have. Um, and I put, yeah, it on my needle and I've tried on a few different sweaters. They just, I think the only time, it works really, really well. It's generally very fast to put the tube on the tip and pull it through all your stitches and try your sweater on, take it off, and then pull the needle back through. Um, but I would say, with the exception of yarn that's like really toothy, it can kind of get bottlenecked at the join of the needle where the needle and the tubing meet. And uh, you will have to spend some time like guiding your stitches over it. Um, but to me, it's still faster because, you know, if you thread waste yarn on a tapestry needle and you pull that, work all the stitches off your needle, you know, depending on how much, many stitches on your sweater, maybe like a half hour and then you've got to try it on and you got to do the same to get it back. So it's sort of like this roadblock into trying things on. And I think that um, it's, yeah, it's generally much quicker. I have a lot of them in different colors. And I got excited about it. Here's the pink one. Um, and I have given them away as well. It's a fun gift to give people. Other knitters. Orange. And mauve. Which is really another kind of pink. So I think they were in this form. It's maybe like 18 bucks, I think, which is kind of a lot for a plastic tubing. And like I said, a lot of people have just gone to the craft store and bought and found this kind of um, tubing. It just needs to be able to like hold on to the tip of your needle without slipping off. Someone else does that, did ask me the question of, um, am I afraid that it might pop off while I'm moving the stitches? And um, yes, I, I think I answered yes, I am concerned about that, but I'm pretty careful while I'm doing it. And um, you know, tools break, needles break, you know, and you can lose, drop all your stitches off if your needles cord breaks or something. So, you know, just be careful. And um, with the toothier yarns, with Easy V was the one that I was talking about where it was just took a lot longer to get the stitches on and off the, the cable, but the tubing, but um, I was just careful and watched it. And yeah, but I think it's, probably the most 
useful tool I will have come across all year. And I want to make sure that you know about it um, and try it out. That's kind of all I have today. It was a lot of things. And um, oh, my goals are to get that shawl that I showed last week, The what I'm calling the Fjord shawl. I need to name it for sure. The naming knitting patterns is um, just a little tricky because you got to make sure there's nothing on Ravelry with that name or there's no other like it would be okay if there was a sweater in a similar name, if I would, mine was the only shawl and vice versa, like that kind of thing. But you really don't want to have the same name as another design. And, um, but you want it to be like reflective of your initial inspiration and how you feel about the, the work and a name that you think people will enjoy and connect with, hopefully. So I've been calling it the Fjord shawl because it is that's the name of the colorway from, from Let Lopi. It's similar to this that I showed earlier. This is the Pluto Lopi, but it's a similar color. Maybe this is like a little darker, but, um, but it's called Fjord. And, uh, I like that name. I like that word. I like the FJ of that F J O R D. Um, so I'm going to try to name it something like that. Fjord cable or Fjord something for Fjord shawl. But yes, that's my next thing is to get that pattern written up and tech edited and put a testing call out. So that's where I'm going to put a lot of my energy this week. And um, I hope to finish this second sock so that I can start writing uh, this pattern. Get this one moving along too. And um, yeah, play with my other fun projects. But I hope you have a really enjoyable first full week of September, us going all back to school and back to work during Memorial Day, Labor Day. And um, yeah, you can ease into September with some breaks and some breathers. It can be really intense to come back to a schedule after the summer. So anyways, happy knitting.